All right, in elementary calculus, uh, you learn that differentiation and integration are transforms. That means, roughly speaking, these operations transform a function into another function. For example, f of x equals x squared is transformed into a linear function, and a family of cubic functions play operations of differentiation and integration. So, just kind of illustrate what I'm talking about here. If I take the derivative of x squared, I get 2x, and if I integrate x squared, I get one-third x uh, cubed plus c. Uh, moreover, these two transforms possess a, the linearity property that the transformation of a linear combination of functions is a linear combination of transforms. Okay, so if I take the derivative of, say, a combination of functions, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. So uh, the derivative of alpha f of x plus beta g of x, uh, I get another linear type function. So alpha f of x prime plus uh, beta g prime of x. And if I integrate, uh, alpha f of x plus beta g of x, um, I essentially can factor out the alpha and the beta. Uh, for alpha and beta constants and provided that each derivative and integral actually exists. In this lesson, we're gonna look at a special type of integral transformation called the Laplace transformation. All right, so in addition to possessing the linearity property, the Laplace transform has many other interesting properties that make it very useful in solving linear initial value problems. Uh, so for example, if f of x is a function of two variables, then the definite integral of f, f with respect to one of the variables leads to another variable function. So uh, let's take a definite integral of 2x y squared dx, and I'm gonna integrate um, with respect to x, which means I'm gonna hold y constant. So that's going to give me the 2 out front times 1 half uh, x squared, and we keep the y squared where it is. Uh, and then I evaluate uh, x in terms of the 2 and the 1. So obviously 2 and the 1 half uh, divide out, and I'm left with uh, 2 squared minus 1 squared times y squared, which is just 3y squared. Okay, so just go with this for a second. We're essentially saying when we integrate or differentiate, we get a new function, and we're gonna do something with that general property. So uh, in general, uh, the integral from a to b of k s of t times f t uh, dt transform a function of the variable t uh, into the function uh, t, uh, sorry, function f of the variable s. It's a letter S, by the way. Uh, we are particularly interested in an integral transform, transform. Whereas the interval of inter integration is unbounded in the interval from zero to infinity, if f of t is defined from t being greater than or equal to zero, uh, then the improper integral would be defined as the limit B approaches infinity of the integral from B to z, uh, zero to B of that same function. So if the limit uh, exists, then we say the integral exists or is convergent. If the limit does not exist, the integral does not exist and is divergent. The limit will in general exist only for certain values of the variable s. Which brings us to a new definition. The function k of s of t is called the kernel of the transform. 
The choice uh, k of s of t equals e to the negative st as a kernel gives us especially important integral transforms. Uh, hopefully that e to the s of t, um, we've been basically done uh, half the course so far as dealing with uh, a bunch of um, solution sets that have e's in them. Anyways, um, okay, so we're going to uh, let f be a function defined for t is greater than or equal to zero, then the integral uh, and that fancy L looking symbol, so let me kind of highlight this, that's, that's the symbol for the Laplace transform. Uh, so that Laplace transform we define as the integral from zero to infinity of e of s of t uh, times f of t dt. Uh, all right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just practice some evaluation techniques. Okay, so before we jump into these examples, I, I do want to make a subtle point. Um, if you think back to Cal 1, you think back to when we first learned about the limit definition of a derivative, uh, you know, for a couple of homework problems, it, that was a lot of work. There was a lot of awkwardness to the whole limit process. Um, you had to use the uh, difference quotient process um, a bunch of times until uh, maybe you recognize there's a, a shortcut or a pattern to it. Uh, and then you kind of never looked back and thought, thought about limits. Um, and so I'm going to give you a parallel that that's what this is. So the Laplace transform, um, we're going to just look at some illustrations of some specific examples using that limit definition, but eventually um, we'll walk away from the limit definition and have another process that we can utilize to do that. So uh, I just want you to be a little patient here. Um, and the Laplace symbol, as a uh, for the young folk probably not going to get this but it's like a cursive L all right so the definition was the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st of 1 dt or times 1 I'm not of 1 times 1 which if we apply our limit definition so that's the limit B approaches infinity of zero to B e to the negative s t dt, uh, and that's just a I guess a u substitution. But we've done enough integrals with e that I think I can just jump straight to this. So it's the limit of b approaches infinity of negative e to the st uh, over s from 0 to b, which is going to give me the limit as b approaches infinity of negative e to the negative sb plus 1 over s. Okay, And let's think about what happens as we have take that exponent and have it approach infinity. Well, that's going to be e to the 0, and e to the 0 is, uh, you know, that, that term's going to go away on us. Uh, oh, yeah, because that's 1 over e to the 0, uh, which means this thing's going to simplify down to 1 over s. So the Laplace transform is simply of one is just one over s. Let's look at another. Okay, so the Laplace of e to the negative three t Okay, so that's gonna be integral from zero to infinity e to the negative 3t times e to negative st dt, which is 0 to infinity e to the negative s plus 3 uh, t dt, uh, which fits our uh, integral pattern for e. So that's going to give us, uh, say we want a negative um, 1 over s plus 3 on the outside. So negative e 
negative s plus 3t over s plus 3, and that's evaluated at 0 to infinity. And if we go through that whole limit conversation, uh, the e term essentially becomes 1. And so we're left with 1 over s plus 3. Uh, which is hopefully making you go, wait a second, that's interesting. Um, so maybe there's, a, maybe there's a way we can go from the Laplace straight to the end result, um, which yes, that's the point of this conversation. Um, but let's try one more. 